varicose veins come back? All varicose vein treatments have a so-called recurrence rate. So if you treat 100 people with any treatment, you can measure how many people have a vein problem five years later. And that's called the five-year recurrence rate. Um, the modern treatments that we have, particularly the endothermal treatment, have a very low recurrence rate. Um, it's been estimated that it's 2 or 3 percent per year. And that's because even if you had a magic wand and you could wave it and have a perfect treatment, other veins in the leg, which are healthy now, may go on and become unhealthy and appear as varicose veins. Having said that, when performed correctly, I've never seen a recurrence in a vein that I've treated with endothermal treatments. Now, it's, I'm not saying it's 100%, but so far, it's pretty close to 100%. And um, in the medical literature, it's quoted as being 97 to 99% effective. And what is the difference between venous closure, that's radiofrequency ablation, and endothermal laser therapy for varicose veins? Well, they're both forms of heat energy and they both treat the vein from the inside using heat energy. For venous closure, the energy delivery system is radio frequency. Um, I like to describe that a little bit like microwaves uh, and that involves putting a very fine catheter into the vein under local anaesthetic and then using radio frequency or microwave energy to heat the vein to a temperature at which it's closed, cauterized, and devitalized. Laser is also a form of heat energy, but we put a very fine catheter, which is in fact a piece of optical glass, and that optical glass delivers or transmits the laser energy into the vein, and it's laser that heats the vein to close it. Now, in terms of effectiveness, there's very little difference uh, between the two. They both are extremely effective. They both use heat energy. They both have um, very low recurrence rates. And if you were to have one leg treated with laser and the other leg treated with radio frequency, you wouldn't notice any difference. Can you tell me, what is ultrasound guided foam sclerotherapy? Foam sclerotherapy is a way of treating the veins from the inside. And we use a prescription medicine inside the vein to cause the vein to close and to be dispersed. The prescription medicine is called a sclerosant. It works by removing the lining of the vein, which it does within a few seconds of the injection, and then the vein responds by shrinking and shriveling and dispersing. Now, what, what we do with foam sclerotherapy is we turn that prescription medicine, which comes as a liquid, we turn it temporarily into foam. Now, it's not like cavity wall insulation. It doesn't go into the vein and stay there forever. It's more like a, a hair mousse or a shaving foam. It goes into the vein. It pushes the blood out of the way, sits in the vein and, and does what it's supposed to do, which is remove the lining of the vein. And then when it's done its job, within a few minutes, it disperses and it's eliminated from your body. So it disappears completely. It doesn't stay there forever. Why do we turn it into foam? Well, we turn it into foam because we can see it on ultrasound and we guide the injections and we guide the positioning of the foam inside the vein with ultrasound. And we turn it into foam because foam doesn't mix with blood. It displaces or pushes the blood out of the way and it has a much more uniform and effective um, action on the vein itself. So um, it's a form of chemical treatment using a prescription medicine. And I've heard you can get your veins treated with superglue now. Um, that's Safion's venous seal treatment. Is that a safe treatment? Um, the Safion venous seal treatment involves a medical superglue which has been in use in a slightly different form for over 50 years. So in medicine we've been using superglue to treat um, problems inside the brain, neurological problems like aneurysms. Uh, we've been using it in trauma and in surgery and also to close the skin for 
many, many years. So we have lots of evidence to suggest that the use of medical superglue in medicine is extremely safe. There's no evidence that the glue moves around the body, that it's broken down into toxic metabolites, or that it causes cancer, for example. What um, has changed with the use of superglue for vein is the formulation and uh, how it's produced. It's been in production for many years, it's been researched for many years, and it's been found to be safe and effective in the treatment of veins. It's relatively new in that it's only been used in humans for three years, and it's only been available in Europe in the last two years. But the evidence in the medical literature is that it is safe and that it is effective. What is a phlebectomy? Phlebectomy is the name for the procedure in which the varicose veins are delicately extracted under local anaesthetic through tiny little pricks in the skin. Um, it's not to be confused with surgical stripping, which I certainly do not do and would not advise. That's the old-fashioned operation that was done in hospitals using major cuts to remove the refluxing vein, which I would now recommend is treated by endovenous laser or venous closure. What is a duplex ultrasound? A duplex ultrasound is a specific sort of ultrasound examination and it has two components to it. We can see the vein on ultrasound, that's the scan image, but we can also see flow of blood in the veins. And the flow of blood is very cleverly superimposed on the picture, uh, usually color coded, so we can see direction of flow, either blue or red, inside the vein. And it's a very sophisticated examination which allows us to very precisely identify where the abnormal veins are and where the reflux is. And it's essential for accurately uh, targeting the treatment for varicose veins and reflux. Is private varicose veins treatment expensive? This is, a, this is a question that concerns a lot of people if they've never had private treatment or they don't have private health insurance. Um, private, health, private treatment can be expensive and uh, what we do at our clinic is we're extremely transparent with the costs. So they're published on our website and everyone who has a consultation gets a written quotation for their treatment. The most expensive treatment that I perform is just under £5,000 for treating the vein problem in one leg. And the most expensive treatment at the moment is the Venaseal by Safion. Uh, endovenous laser treatment is just over £4,000 and uh, that's all inclusive of the treatment itself, the compression stockings that are used afterwards, all the follow-up visits and appointments and all the follow-up scans. And it also includes the cost of any unscheduled appointments should the patient have an unexpected problem or concern and if anything were to be uh, of concern, we will try our best to put it right for that person at no extra charge. I think if you're requesting treatment, you want to be absolutely sure that there are no hidden extras, that there are no additional costs for scans and follow-up appointments that might give you an unexpected surprise. The most affordable treatment is foam sclerotherapy, uh, and uh, we offer foam sclerotherapy treatment from £1,200. Well, thank you very much for talking to me today, Dr. Gajraj. Um, can I just ask, finally, how do you go about finding a good varicose veins clinic? That's a difficult question. I think traditionally what people have done is go and see their family doctor and ask him or her. Increasingly now, we're finding that uh, general practitioners uh, are not referring to the NHS and they've lost their links to the local hospital and they no longer know who is providing up-to-date and modern treatments. I think increasingly people are doing their own research and they're using the internet for that. Now there's always a risk that what you see on the internet can be confusing but I would suggest that you see someone who does a lot of vein treatments, who uses duplex ultrasound scan 
um, who has a background of being a vascular surgeon or an interventional radiologist and who's a member of the Royal College of Surgeons or the Vascular Society. I think you want to be sure that the team that's going to be treating you uh, has a long record of treating these conditions and treats a large number of people. You also probably want to look at uh, testimonials and independent websites. One of the ones that I recommend is I Want Great Care. It's a moderated, independent website that collects feedback from patients and colleagues and posts it on the website. Um, you also want to be sure that the person you see is going to be the person that's going to be treating you and you want to ask them about their individual results. Um, from my point of view I think before and after photographs are very um, compelling and I think you also want to have uh, advice from previous patients. Most specialists will be very happy to put you in touch with previous clients or patients who've had treatment in that clinic.